So you mentioned the Frankfurt School is pushing ideas, including social justice, uh, which is something that that many Americans find to be a positive thing. Uh, what is the link between social justice and communist ideology? Well, well, the link is, of course, um, communists would not tolerate social justice in the way that that term would be used, uh, perhaps, uh, by progressives today when they're talking about social justice or, or equity. Uh, what that is used is that is simply a tactical tool, right? I mean, that is going to be used to because it sounds pleasing, it sounds positive, it sounds progressive, who could oppose social justice, right? No one could oppose uh, social justice. But behind that, of course, tactic is the strategy of uh, communism to essentially um, uh, remove the linchpin uh, of Western uh, societies. So when we're thinking through communist thought, of course, communists are expert at waging political warfare, right? At engaging in that because they see uh, they have a revolutionary agenda, and they see that all measures short of violent measures, at least thus far, uh, are legitimate uh, in political warfare. They can say anything, and they can always position a society to the left so that by focusing, because you control the ideas industry, media, film, popular culture, you're always going to have that echo chamber where um, thought about uh, social justice is going to be seen as progressive. And social justice means one thing, right? Ultimately, what the communists want. It doesn't mean, you know, we can think about uh, Plato's euthyphro, right? Well, what is justice, right? We can get into a discussion, and in a liberal context, you might have that. For communists, of course, that's not, or for progressives today, uh, that's not possible, right? Social justice is something to advance the revolution. It's something, it is a cudgel used to beat bourgeois society, uh, to move in a communist direction. It has nothing to do with social justice as um, essentially the uh, attractiveness of the term, at least superficially, would entail. So in other words, the communists are using that term, but imbuing it with a different meaning, a revolutionary meaning that has little to do with what we in the West think of as justice. Absolutely. Everything is permitted for communists, right? When they're waging war against their in, in, internal enemies, against their bourgeois enemies, they want to destroy liberal society, right? And replace it with a communist tyranny. And so they allow themselves, as Reagan said, to lie, cheat, steal, whatever. Uh, uh, everything is permitted to them by their own logic. So um, they can, will use terms that sound very attractive. Uh, to people uh, and that are enticing, as long as you don't look too deeply uh, at that, I think um, uh, you know that, that uh, it's, it can be a very uh, useful tool, as they always have. The term progressive, if you look at that genealogy, um, you'll see that as well, where the communism, of course, had a bad name in the West, uh, in the United States, but progressivism doesn't, right? Progressivism ties into American political history, the progressive movement, uh, in Wisconsin, obviously, if you will, in the upper Midwest, you had a large number of progressive politicians. And so tying that, that to progressivism, not saying that you're communist, but saying that you're progressive, is a way to, as a tactical trick, uh, of course, uh, to advance your agenda while um, not dealing with essentially the, the true agenda that you're uh, seeking to advance. It's like hiding, hiding ideology in language, like communists are going to take a term that has one meaning, uh, but the communists see it with a different meaning, and then they they promote that idea and slowly imbue it with this communist meaning until the very definition of that word is now different. Uh, but it kind of happened like a like a frog in boiling water. It's kind of like Xi Jinping talking about China's democracy, and it's the best democracy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and language, communists are very sensitive to language, of course. They recognize the power of language. Uh, that Language helps to feed the ideas that you possess. It allows you to, um, it, it can be flavored, it can be uh, influenced either positively or negatively. Uh, and so, uh, again, fundamentally, communists are very sensitive to ideas, linguistic approaches, 
uh, if you will. So they're, they're going to be um, artful and very creative and always coming up with a new term. Uh, and there's always, again, a crisis, right? That's another a tactic that the communists use. There's always an issue. There's always a, an event. There's always a group which is oppressed. We have to bring about these changes in our society in order to help this group. By the own logic of liberalism, right? These people have been oppressed. They've been mistreated. And therefore, we must devote all of our efforts urgently uh, to bringing about these uh, changes. So we can see in the history of, of the civil rights movement, segue to the women's rights movement, segue to rights uh, for lesbians and for, uh, for gays. And then that segued into, if you will, LGBTQ you know, uh, plus, that segued into trans, right? There's always a crisis. It's always a way of keeping the liberal society on the back foot, right? It's never a way of saying, hey, should we make these changes or what are the costs? There's always a crisis that has to be addressed, which they use, again, tactically uh, to advance um, uh, their uh, revolutionary ends. So how would you, uh, how would you have, what would you say to somebody like to, to an American who wants to understand the difference between this? Cause a lot of people do like the idea of social justice. I think most people would say like, Hey, Jim Crow South was not good. How do you determine like, Oh, I'm just, I'm trying to make things better versus I am now slipping into some communist conspiracy that I have no idea about. Yeah. I think because like when, what you just said, Brad could definitely be interpreted as like oh well so was the civil rights movement bad it was the women's movement bad is like every you know is every uh, like attempt to make things more you know equal for people like is that a bad thing right well liberal societies have uh, a profound advantage in that they're able to address their flaws in a way with civil rights movement women's rights movement uh did at the same time, those changes were recognized by communists as being ways that they could further their agenda uh, as well. So to draw out that contrast, I think it's very useful to think through, are you focused on individual rights or are you focused on group rights, right? Are you focused on, do you see humans as, as humans, uh, as individuals whose rights need to be protected, or are you thinking in th terms of social groups, Right? And we were thinking along those lines, I think that allows us to illuminate some differences between in a liberal approach, for example, of Martin Luther King, right, who wanted people to be judged on the content of their character, not on the color of their skin, versus progressive ideology today, which is uh, heavily influenced uh, by, that, uh, 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 by a communist thought and sees individuals as groups. Because you are of this color, you, are, you need to play this role, right? So it's that tension. King versus progressives today gives a, a good way of illuminating that difference between what liberalism would seek to achieve and to reform itself uh, versus, uh, if you will, a communist ideological um, uh, agenda. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's very clear. You mentioned it earlier, the idea of repressive tolerance. Uh, like, like, obviously, like the kind of, KKK, white supremacy, lynching people, obviously bad. But now you've gotten to the point where people are calling so like so many things white supremacy. Drinking coffee is white supremacy. Hard work is white supremacy. Monogamy is even being called white supremacy because that's part of this, you know, white Christian culture promoting uh, monogamous, monogamous relationships. And like that really kind I mean, of shows because you because only Christian cultures have monogamous relationships. It's it's weird, yeah. It, this is this is that kind of creep where there is like this root thing that is bad, but then it somehow just morphs into something completely different. But doesn't that make it easier for people to think that's just a joke, though? Like if you hear people I, I say, don't know. I'm sure. "Drinking coffee is white supremacy," then you know you, I think most people wouldn't take that seriously. You would think. But remember, in the Cultural Revolution, Mao had kids tearing up grass because grass was bourgeois. And that sounds like a joke, but it became deadly serious. Uh, it, it can very easily. I mean, the, 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 the communist aspect is totalitarian, right? And so there's always going to be uh, the... Um, uh, and, and it, again, it's not fettered by any type of uh, safeguards in Western civilization or in religious thought or in respect for uh, individual 
uh, right. So it's a, a, a very important point. It's a very significant uh, uh, issue. And Americans need to consider this because we're in a period of ideological upheaval where uh, progressivism now is, is a potent political force uh, and uh, liberalism, uh, again, political liberalism, uh, is uh, under strain in a way that it never has uh, been. I mean, Louis Hartz wrote that great book, The Liberal Tradition in America, right? He wrote that about 1955, where he said America was an absolute, uh, was uh, the home of uh, liberal absolutism, by which he meant uh, liberalism will never be successfully replaced in the United States. It, there have been contenders, certainly, uh, fascism, uh, communism, uh, as he identified it, the Western agrarian type of uh, uh, Tory life uh, of the American South. And he said liberalism had defeated all of those challengers, right? So in 1955, that you could certainly recognize that was uh, the case, a very powerful and influential book. But today you can see that progressivism is really pushing liberalism um, in a way that um, Louis Hartz would not have identified, right? That in fact, America is not a liberal absolutist state. America is undergoing an ideological upheaval today uh, between progressivism, heavily informed by communist thought, and traditional, the Hartzian uh, conception of, of uh, a liberal state. So it's a very, uh, this is a test, obviously, we're undergoing, and we'll see which way, uh, obviously, the country turns.